Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to learn about mastication and deglutition. Mastication is otherwise called as chewing process and deglutition is otherwise called as swallowing. So these two movements are the foremost movements that take place in the gastrointestinal tract. So this is the synopsis. So first we are going to learn about the physiological anatomy of the oral cavity, pharynx and the esophagus, the sphincters involved etc. And then about the mastication and then about the swallowing process. First about the swallowing reflex, the stages of swallowing and then about the neural mechanisms involved in the swallowing process. Finally, we are going to discuss about uh, certain disorders of swallowing. First, we will see about the physiological anatomy. The first picture shows the sagittal section of the head and the neck. Uh, here this is the nasal cavity and this is the oral cavity and this is the tongue. And this part is the nasopharynx and this is the oropharynx and this is the laryngopharynx. And anteriorly you have the larynx and the trachea. This is the respiratory tract and behind that is posteriorly you have the esophagus part of the gastrointestinal tract. Now as you can see the pharynx here, the oropharynx is connected to the oral cavity. It is connected to the uh, nasal cavity through the posterior nest. This is the posterior nest and it is connected to the esophagus and it is also connected to the respiratory tract. So remember this oropharynx, it actually forms the common pathway for the transmission of both air and the food. But the pharynx can conduct only one at a time, either food or air. So, the air we breathe in will pass through the nasal cavity through the oropharynx and it will enter into the respiratory tract. Whereas, the food we uh, intake will be chewed in the oral cavity and then it will be entering again the same oropharynx and it, it has to enter into the esophagus. Okay, now the second picture shows the upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter. So, this is the esophagus. So, esophagus is guarded by the upper esophageal sphincter and lower esophageal sphincter and these sphincters are nothing but the thickened circular muscles from these sphincters. Okay? So, this upper esophageal sphincter remains closed when uh, in between the swallows. That is whenever we are not swallowing anything, this upper esophageal sphincter will be in a closed state. That will prevent the movement of air into the esophagus. That is preventing aerophagia. And next, this again the lower esophageal sphincter also remains closed between the swallow. When we do not swallow the food, the lower esophageal sphincter also remains in the closed state and that will prevent the reflex of the acidic gastric contents into the esophagus. So, upper esophageal sphincter will prevent the movement of air into the esophagus in between swallows whereas the lower esophageal sphincter will prevent the reflex of acidic gastric contents from the stomach into the esophagus. If the acidic gastric contents will pass, uh, if it is reflexed from the stomach into the esophagus, this can erode the esophageal mucosa resulting in inflammation and ulcers. Okay? So that is all about the physiological anatomy. Moving on to the first moment that is mastication. It is otherwise called as chewing. So, it is actually a voluntary act. We voluntarily chew the food. Okay? The primary purpose of mastication or chewing is to break down the larger food particles into smaller ones and it is completely mixed with the saliva. A bolus is formed and this bolus will be easy enough to swallow. So, the main purpose is to break down the larger food particles into smaller ones. And this mastication is carried out by the coordinated action of all the muscles uh, that are surrounding uh, the cheeks, uh, lips and then the jaws, the muscles in the jaws, the tongue. All these muscles act in a coordinated manner to bring about the chewing movements. Okay? So, that constitutes the chewing reflex. We will be seeing the steps of the chewing reflex shortly. And what about the teeth? What is the function of the teeth? So, the teeth, there are, there are three types, right? The incisors which are present in the front, the premolars which are present behind the incisors and then you have the molars. So, these incisors have the cutting action, they cut the food particles whereas the molars that are present posteriorly have the grinding action, they grind the food. So, the teeth mainly function to cut and grind the food so that the large particles will be broken down into smaller ones. For these 
actions to take place the muscles should act in a coordinated manner and that constitutes the chewing reflex now let us see the steps of the chewing reflex see first as we intake the food the presence of food in the mouth uh, will cause reflex inhibition of the muscles these muscles are known as masticatory muscles so this is temporalis and this is masseter and there are two other masticatory muscles these are the pterygoids these are the uh, this is medial pterygoid and this is lateral pterygoid these muscles are called as masticatory muscles temporalis medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid and masseter as we intake the food the food is present in the mouth right and this will cause reflex inhibition of the masticatory muscles and as a result these muscles will relax and hence the jaw will drop down so when these muscles relax the jaw will drop down and this uh, dropping of the lower jaw will result in the stretching of the muscles and this stretch of the muscles will bring about rebound contraction and this rebound contraction will bring about the that is it will press the food within the linings of the mouth as the muscle contracts the jaw is lifted upwards and that will press the food within the linings of the mouth again there will be reflex inhibition of the masticatory muscles so the second step will follow after this and this this will be repeated again and again that is uh, as the food is pressed within the linings of the mouth there is reflex inhibition of the masticatory muscles again the lower jaw will drop down the muscles will stretch that will bring about the rebound contraction so in this way the lower jaw will be moving down and up and down and up and ultimately causing making the teeth to cut and grind the larger food particles into smaller ones these rhythmic movements constitute the chewing reflex